Hello and welcome everybody, I'm on Propavarian and today we have returned of course in Crusader Kings 3 in our wonderful kingdom of Aquitaine. There has been a CK3 update, meaning that I had to deactivate a couple of mods. Uh, if you're playing with a mod list, just give it a moment. I had to actually change a couple of lines within the submission to authority mod so that the graphics would all work. Listen, this is how it is after updates, of course. But I'm ready to play and I'm ready to get involved. And I think the big theme of this very episode is that our king fears revolt internally and to stop the revolt internally he must make sure that there isn't enough pressure on the outside so that anybody on the inside could feel comfortable rebelling against him right here we have two people that are essentially i would say going through something that our king fears quite aggressively this is the king of asturias and then one of his relatives, and that relative has betrayed him. You can see it right here. Duke Roderico II Patruines of Cantabria is going for his very own claim on all of Asturias. Um, we will, of course, intervene. We will, of course, try to stop it in the name of Adelfonso. It is actually an interesting case, I think, of internal struggle. I said this at the end of the last episode, that I thought that in my brain somewhere there was something stashed away that said Duke Roderico II was somehow related to you. And indeed he was. Look at that. It is our sister, Duquesa Toda Adales Catalines, or at least it was. She did die in childbirth. I remember this. And it has been, you know, a very solid 15 years since then. But since then, Duke Roderico II hasn't really done much to gain my favor, to curry my favor. Instead, Re Adelfonso II has been incredibly smart. He married my sister, Reina Elbira Catalinas, and on top of that, his primary heir actually also married my daughter. Meaning that we now have a very, very tight connection to, of course, Asturias, and meaning that we now better get involved for our own sake. This isn't just us going ahead similar to France and trying to safeguard, you know, the very notion of kingdomhood. No, this is us saying we need somebody that is strong here in the south, in the Iberian Peninsula. If you really look at our power base, then you will recognize that we hold land exclusively to the north of the Pyrenees and the entire south is under the control of Toulouse. Iberia, I think, as a whole, is a bit of a disconnected, disjointed adventure for us. We don't quite know where to start and where to stop with it, but what we do know is that there must be a center of power there, or else, first of all, the Muslims will get idea, and second of all, if Asturias falls, what is stopping any of the other rulers in our realm to do the same to us? So, it is time now to safeguard what is dearest to us, and that is our kingdom, that is our position in the world, because with that, of course, is also combined the position of our family, most notably Regina Fakio. I also did change the uh, icon of Aquitaine. You can see right now it is not Aquitania, that is because more cultural names is currently not compatible with this patch, so I had to deactivate it. Hopefully we can activate it later on. This one is a changed uh, icon. If you take a look at this, I think we can go back to the basics. There you go. Reset historical one. We took away the fleur de -lis. We put in the one that we now have, which is, you know, the actual Occitan cross. Then we have the lion, and in the background we have basically Basque symbolry. I am mostly worried that it might be a bit too small, because this is basically already a coat of arms as is, but I like all the symbolism that uh, went into it, so I did pick this one. Now, let's get all of our army, quite frankly, and let's make sure that this war will be won. And you know what? I thought about this. I am not very competent when it comes to Marshall, but this is something where I promised a friend, because that is exactly what Re Adelfonso IV is, I promised a friend that I would aid him. I think I will be leading this expedition myself. Let's siege down our enemy and let's make sure that Asturias remains in full control of all of its constituents' regions. That is the most important part. I, I believe they've actually went and... Oh no, that is Asturias. That is not us. I was about to say, <laughs> did they dare to siege me down? But no, they did not. Now, what is this? The young mediator. There was a commotion among the children today. Gazenda was attempting to preach among her fellow youngsters and became the target of a small fight. Right, so Munya Asnares intervened and managed to stop the fight before anyone got hurt. I would assume that Gazenda basically went in and said, hey, God made me the way he did and... Everybody should be okay with it. Now, Princess Munya, that is very good of you that you stepped in, that you tried to work that out. Um, I think you should always try to remain calm. This is a trait that we are not hostile with at all. 
I did also see that Vasconia Po is actually a newly created cadet branch. You know what? I'm gonna get rid of this quartering right here and then I'm gonna randomize this. I like this. It is still reminiscent of the Occitan flavor, of course, but also of the Basque location. And so Vasconia Pao or Po can indeed have its own sigil as well. Let's keep sieging my daughter. Wow, we have... Uh we have many children. <laughs> Can I just say that? We have uh, plenty of children. Velasquita, welcome to the world indeed. Let's just make sure that I'm not... Ooh, I could vassalize Provence. Really? Um, I am a diplomatic court, in all fairness, and I was looking at Provence. I'm not going to lie to you. What is the impact that I'm getting from the diplomatic court? Plus 13. Honestly, that's not that big. We would have been close even without being a diplomatic court, and ultimately... I didn't min-max the diplomatic court here either, if you think about it, because we're only at level 3 and I'm not even pushing it towards level 4. So you know what? I will actually accept this vassalization once I am home from the war. Having more vassals, having more money sounds like something that is absolutely excellent. Ooh, right. I forgot about this actually. Marquisa Ida of Toulouse. I wanted to do this at the start of the episode. She deserves having Comtessa Adelaide underneath her. That is a rightful vassal of hers. And I will go ahead and also put her onto the council. Of course you deserve to serve in my realm. I mean, that is just the way it should be. Um, I would like to increase county control here. Oh, it's basically done. Well, okay. Uh, two years left. Oh no, there you go. <laughs> well, that didn't work out, right? Two years left. Uh, we can increase that, of course. Let's just make sure that everything is in order before we finish this war and before we take the vassal ship there. Befriend, an enjoyable evening. Right, here's my brother. After learning that Arzapes Pico Lope would be guesting at a manor in the castle town of Barcelona, I realized that it would be the perfect occasion to meet with him. By my request, I was seated next to him for the ration of dinner and we both had a great time. By the time I left, I felt as though we had known each other a lifetime already. Very, very good. And with that, we have a new friend. Look at that, now we have three friends. And this actually makes me wonder... Prince Lope, I have a great relationship with you. I don't necessarily need you to be my friend. You know what? I was thinking... Uh, Marcus Ida, first of all. We can negotiate an alliance because we are, of course, also friends. That alliance is very important for the mental well-being of Erega Azna, I think. Ultimately, he is a good friend of this person, but he is worried because everywhere the big vassals appear to be rebelling and... He can't stand the idea of one of his friends rebelling. Um, you are 15. We may change... Oh, I can't change it, can I? Now that I think about it, I can't change his vassal contract to March because we already changed his vassal contract, of course. Um, you know what? Now that we are friends with your wife, I think it might be a good idea... Ooh, it might be an even better idea to become friends with the Pope. We have had a fairly direct connection to Maximus Urbanus II in particular, and my god, he is 93. You know what? I will try to befriend you. Absolutely. This is one of those relationships where usually I stray away from even being in contact with the Pope in the first place, but Pontifex Maximus Urbanus II has aided us. We have handed out lands, you know, towards the church here in the West in particular, I think uh, we have had one of the best relationships with the Pope that any of my characters have ever had. Now, all of this aside, we can vassalize her. Um, this is, that's fine. Don't worry about it too much. We're friends with Lope as is. Right, we're deeply, deeply in the red. That is very, very bad. And that is everything. Okay, I wanted to make sure that there were no children that needed education. But everything seems to be looking quite all right. Mm, and here we have a new perk. I do like room to rule. Confidence would also be great, though. You know what? I think he needs to think of himself first. Uh, losing the stress gain there is very important. And then the friend scheme power. I mean, honestly, they're already all at 100% anyway. I think we're going to go towards, you know, room to rule and heart of the family. Now, we are looking at the enemy coming towards us. Oh, no. Um... I think we got caught. Yeah, wow. We we got caught out. I'm not changing my command, of course. If I get wounded, so be it. But this went terribly. The Battle of Jorgo of Vizcaya. As the battle rages on, I realize that there are multiple weak points in our front line, which are particularly vulnerable to an enemy spearhead attack. Screaming at my men to cover the softened area, my voice breaks, and I realize they will not be able to hear me. Quick, I say to the men around me, you need to come with me, I command them, and usher them in the direction of the weak spot. As we arrive, the enemy has already begun charging into the vulnerable gap in the line, so I rally the men to brace for a coming charge. Once we hold, I hear an enemy general shouting a muffled command, followed by the groans of numerous enemy footmen. 
What was that sound, I think, before a rain of spears and javelins begins to descend over the shoulders of the enemy push? Wow, we are having a truly awful time in this battle, aren't we? As projectiles slam into the middle around me, one smacks past my head, ex excruciatingly close to penetrating my skull. As I turn in shock, I see the same spear destined for my head lodged in the chest of a lifeless footman behind me, jarred and stunned. I wobble away from the enemy charge in a nauseating mix of fear and shock. That could have been me. That was close, way too close, um, a near-death experience, or I should take a break from this peril. You know what? I will rest from being a frontline commander and I will rest from combat indeed. Yeah, no, we are not a very talented man when it comes to warfare, so not being a frontline commander is indeed very reasonable to me. We lost this battle. Wow, wait a minute. Right, okay, this is the French war that just ended. My daughter learned the Provençal, that is outstanding. Um, can I not make you learn... Wait, you already are learning a language? Ooh. And he was actually slain in the battle. Diego de la Rioja, uh, Rioja was slain in the battle. I failed. This is, without a doubt, a situation where I felt I would definitely put my brother onto the council here, but... Wow. The reign of this king, externally, looks truly breathtaking, truly amazing. But whenever somebody actually needed him... When his ally, when his friend in Asturias said, I need you to defend against Cantabria, we were slaughtered. He himself said, I should be a commander, I should be leading the push here, and he failed. And in the end, um, we're simply going to push Consul Gervais. Oh, and I missed the, the actual battle interaction there. But we absolutely got completely destroyed. Who do we have a uh, prisoner here? Duke Piares of Armagnac. I can't believe it yet again. A disaster. A complete disaster, no matter how you look at it. Um, oh, nope, I, I do not want to pay that money. Sorry to tell you this. We are going to see... Please, stop making me pay that money. We are going to try to meet up with them. My own adventures clearly were misguided. And I like that. I do want to point that out. I'm a huge supporter of these sort of things happening and things going wrong. But yeah, without a doubt, maybe we should spend more money on military means if we had the money. Now, he has become a grey eminence. He's not my primary heir, of course. My primary heir is a fortune builder, which does make a lot of sense, seeing as we are throwing money out of the window. There was a really great comment. I love that comment so much. There was a great comment under the last video that basically said, I get anxiety every time I look at your monthly income. And the point of this is, you should. You should get anxiety because we are running the kingdom in a way that isn't ideal. We're not great with money. We are at best mediocre. Our wife isn't really great. And then our advisor, well, our advisor is now gone. As you can see, Prince Asna II can step in here. Hmm, I will give you this position. Please, my son, you take care of this. The lesson of this has to be that not every king, not every character can be outstanding with the means given to them. I, as a player, of course, could be. But that's beside the points, isn't it? Uh, be besides the point, isn't it? I could transfer Armagnac. Wait a minute. Oh, you are... Wow. Conde Fernando Anfosess. This house has been absolutely disastrous. They have had the worst time possible. And I mean with that, Bordeaux and Armagnac are now split. <sighs> Duke Piaris is in prison. And I think, quite frankly, um, our kingdom is in a worse condition than ever before. You know what? Let's let's have this story actually unfold. I'm going to dissolve my troops. And I will say that basically the campaign that Aquitaine led into, into the southwest here, that it failed. That my realm, that my, you know, uh, accomplices, or well, I should say that my advisors basically stated, you need to let it go. Our kingdom's uh, treasury must recover. You need to just leave the reign or the realm of Asturias to their own devices. I think that is how we're going to be playing this. Yes, we could win this war for Rey Adelfonso IV, but instead I think Rega Asna says we need to retreat. I do not have the power and I do not want to risk it. Now, let me ask you a question. Uh, you still want to join Princess Ermengarda? I will absolutely accept this. Uh, the Diplo Code is still very, very strong, but I don't see a character reason to not accept, you know, her joining our kingdom here. Maybe we can even find another friend. I really like our bo uh, our borders. I will tell you right now, our borders just just look so clean, just so absolutely cute. 
Now you aren't even close to being able to join me. You know what? Let's hold court. This entire disaster, I think we need to try and become a more competent, you know, sort of a home ruler if you want. And this will cost us some prestige, but we got prestige. We just don't have any money. Sitting in my throne, let's get this done. Let's see what is going on this time around. Oh, and here we already have a very interesting event. I love these when they are related to cultures. Merging of cultural identities. The air is thick with, an, in, with anticipation. As my brother and friend, Arza Pespico, Lope approaches me. My lord, I, came, uh, I come with grave news, but with a solution to fix this problem. It's becoming increasingly clear that the Occitans and Erskaldanuk are becoming more, perhaps even too similar. It's paramount that we show them that it's us, Yaskaldanuk, who are the forefront of innovation, right? Ha, ah, that is very interesting. So, we have a very multicultural realm. I think this is clear to effectively everybody involved. Let's just take a quick look at this. We are Aquitaine, and we rule over, largely, an Occitan people. And I don't think that it is very likely that we can actually hybridize this with this character, because I... I mean, just look at this cost. And the question is, how much does Erega Asna Catalinas understand Occitan culture? What speaks in favor of him understanding it is, of course, the fact that he speaks their language. He actually went all the way and said, I want to understand my subjects. I must learn what their culture and what their rights are all about and that we have ruled from Carcassonne the entire time. But at the same time, our code langu uh, language very much is Basque. Our nobles very much are expected to speak our language rather than the language Provençal. There is nobody in the realm that, you know, is mandated to speak Provençal. We have an Occitan ruler right there. But the rest of the ruling class here, interestingly enough, is either French or Yaskal. Underneath the French ruler, we actually have a lot of Basque, but also a lot of French. Hmm, what are you? You are Occitan. What is my relationship to you? I honestly, that's very interesting that we actually are quite positive towards her. Hmm, and she should be on the council as well, I see. I'm not sure whether I will exchange her. I could exchange her for Duke Geraud. But then again, she lives on the fringes of my empire, or well, of my kingdom. I'm not sure whether I would get involved. So this leaves me with a troublesome sort of uh, event. And I wish we had the other... Uh, I guess this is as good as it gets with the camera angle. Right. So basically, we could be very aggressive. We could say, Arza Pespico, Lope II, I understand your concerns and we must show the peasants that the ruling class, that it is all dominated by the Basques. Or we could say, no, let's show, you know, uh, restraint. Let's understand that we're both equals. Let's host a, fe a, fest a festival to celebrate our rich Yuskal culture. Gives me prestige. Cultural acceptance, of course, goes down. And every Occitan vassal loses 10 opinion. Or, right, this is the watered-down version. Arrange for an exhibit to show off our grandest accomplishments. And there's no need for us to exercise superiority over other cultures. Let me ask you something, Marquise Ida. You are in my ear. And you do not speak Provençal. I have to assume that this means that she is, of course, she is a French ruler, right? And she sees herself as the rightful ruler over the Occitans here. My wife is also French. No, actually, sorry, she is Basque, and she does not speak Provençal either. I will go, I think, with the middle ground here. I think there is a good argument that it's not just my brother, that it is also Marquise Ida that say the Provençal, the Occitans, they need to be underneath us. We are the ruling class here, and they shouldn't be in our way. But that I, at the very least personally, understand the way of the Occitans because I speak their language. So I'm going to go with this one. I will hold an exhibit. It will get rid of some cultural acceptance, but hey, this is the best middle ground that I can find. This is an interesting dynamic. We don't actually have many Occitan vassals. The people that really are, you know, in control of this are either French or Basque. Very interesting. Let's keep track of this. This is something that should go into how we create a hybrid culture. Now, the next one, a shadow in the night. The man who approaches my throne is clearly a commoner. Is it you? Uh, which one is it? Oh, it's this one. Anso... Wait, Anso Anotes? Or, oh, no, it's this guy. Martin Ladron de Guevara, uh, Guevara. Ooh, and he is a very intelligent man. My lord, he begins his speech. I represent the local community of Carcassonne. In the last few months, our cemeteries have been plagued with the disappearance of bodies. Oh no, all had been dug up and left no trace. At first we feared wild animals or obscure powers at work, but then your own court physician Anso was caught red-handed hauling the dead away for his experiments. Please put a stop to this blasphemy. Anso, if you recall, was accused in the past of having done just this. 
And he is friends. Wow, he is friends with my entire family as well. I don't know what to think of him. He was accused of doing something to my mother. And that, I mean, that is just a disaster outright, isn't it? To uh, Catalina's corpse. He was uh, accused of this, I believe, by one of my children. Or was it uh, one of my siblings? I don't think it was. They're, they're all too old. But he was accused. Hmm. I think I will be arresting the grave robber. It will cost me 200 prestige. Hmm. Just cut it off. Save cemeteries. Answer loses opinion. I honestly, I don't think that is justice. I trusted that man. I think we're arresting Anso. I'm not sure what I will do with him, but I am arresting him. Even if it costs me prestige. That man clearly is doing things that are unnatural and unacceptable. I love that my cousin here, the daughter of Anso, is standing, seeing as I judge him. Hmm, yeah, you know what? Arrest the grave robber. Absolutely. Um, as soon as it is her turn to speak, the agitated woman in front of me screams, The end is nigh! Signs are clear and everywhere. The people of Kunz Tarragona know it all too well. Disorders, bandits, thieves, violence, and the disappearance of justice among men. The day of judgment is upon us. There's only one way for us to be saved. Chastity and purity. Renounce the temptations of the flesh. Repent now, for the day is nigh. Hmm... But Sencia de Nayera, she is a Basque. I assume that she does indeed come from Tarragon, right? Which is, uh, well, in the south of our empire. I wouldn't really be knowledgeable on that county itself. But they have experience with the Muslims to their south. Uh, Placencia, huh? She is celibate. I see. Salvation must be achieved through every means. Hmm. I love my wife too much, I think. Burn this raving heretic. Wow. Um, or take this fool out of my sight. I think I will simply dismiss- No, oh! Oh, right, I just recalled. We have had a couple of events that led us into a rather superstitious point of view. Hmm. I think I might just burn her. I don't think I want to become a celibate because my wife, you know, of course I love her dearly and our relationship is without a doubt a physical one. I think I will burn Placencia. I will say that if you bring bad omens into my realm, into my kingdom, you will be punished appropriately. And with that, my business here is done. Oh, I don't know. This was most certainly one of our better judgment periods here, you know, better than the first time holding courts. But even then, I'm not so certain whether we can be described as a good king. Our treasury is completely screwed. Our court physician has for a long time now been going into graveyards and doing who knows what to their bodies. He did it to my mother. What do I do with you? What do I do with him? I could employ him as executioner. Obviously, we're not doing this. I could force him to take the vows. I don't think this would, fa uh, would be fair. I could banish him. I think I will banish him. It will, you know, bring some money into my treasury, but more importantly, it will get him out of the way. Consider yourself banished, my friend. Um, I could transfer Armagnac. I don't think I'm gonna bother with that just now. Artifacts have low durability. I'm not even sure at this point that we will be capable of actually repairing it. But yeah, okay. Um, let's see how the war in Asturias actually continues. I do hope that he can win it. But again, my support is gone because they defeated me in battle. And I have no choice but to accept your conditions for my release. Uh, you are still here. So his family is still with us. But Anso Arnotes has been banished there now in Viennois. Hmm. Princess Cecilia gives a, well, safe harbor to somebody that is as disgusting as this man. Don't know what to think about that. Oh, and look at that. I visited Rome and, wow, yeah, the outfit here isn't working. Eh? <laughs> the papal gut is hanging out. And I'm now friends with the Pope. Hmm. I am now friends with the Pope. And look at that in the north. Roi Geldwin of France is now in control. And you know what? I just want to check. I just want to check. Yeah, I was about to say. He wouldn't accept it even if we are friends unless we had a hook on him. So that is not an option. What can we do with the Pope being our friend? I surely could excommunicate somebody, right? Surely. I could go and ask, uh, request excommunication. And indeed, he wouldn't actually do it. Wow. My friendship means nothing to this Pope. I guess at the very least, I could ask for gold and he would always accept that but yeah I mean I just don't have the piety right now I need financial support and and Pontifex Maximus Urbanus II does appear to be 
quite willing to give it to me. Now, hey, life is stressful. Honestly, yeah, this, this king, <laughs> I can't believe just how unending the pain of existing has been for this king. Now, we are friends with the Pope. Obviously, I'm not going to turn Polition. We could turn reclusive, um, and the friendship with the Pope would immediately be over. No, I think the friendships that we have are what keeps me alive here. That keeps me going because, again, militarily, uh, militarily, and of course, at the end of the day, also financially, we have not had a good time. Everything here is basically building up on our personal relationship. So, I will simply bite my lip and hope that we can bring down the stress level as we go. Uh, could I confess here? Yeah, it's just a disturbing confession. I don't have anything that is a genuine secret. I feel so much lighter. There you go. I had sinful so uh, thoughts, I guess. That, you know, was fair enough. Become a strategic commander. I, I don't think I will right now. Um, That is uh, from the Battlefield mod. Great mod, but, you know, can sometimes be a bit much. How are you doing when it comes to becoming a vassal, right? You're not even close. You're not his rightful liege. Cultural acceptance is very low. That makes a lot of sense. You were an Occitan ruler, which is why, of course, cultural acceptance was very, very high. And you are Aquitanian. Wait a minute. She actually kept that culture from before the cultural split. That is hilarious. Ooh. Well, Pope Urbanus is dead, and I immediately ate infinite stress. Pontifex, uh, Pontifex Maximus Nicolaus II is now come upon us. I honestly... I don't know whether we're going to be interacting with that Pope all that much. Our relationship was a very personal one with the previous Pope. He gave us the mission to unify Aquitaine, and we did. <sighs> but we have other things to worry about. For example, Eregina Fakio Jacques of Aquitaine. She has cancer. I will hire a physician. I will hire the best physician possible. After Anzu is disappointed as much as he has, I, I will go deeper into that. What do you want me to say? I love my wife. I absolutely love my wife, and this is... Uh, she was once married to the Count of Toulouse, Eleonore. I welcome you into my service, you profligate, drunkard, athletic bastard. Absolutely. I will let my uh, wife decide what she does. Then again, she is honest, she is compassionate and lazy. I trust that my wife knows what is good for her. The choice is up to my wife. Uh, let's see. Reduce disease symptoms. A huge boost. That is pretty good. I do wish that we could get rid of the cancer, but honestly, our life is a disaster. I, I know that this is so easy to say because, you know, we are in a great position despite everything. We rule a huge realm, we're making big profits, but our life is a disaster. We are deep in the red. We couldn't help France, we couldn't help Asturias, and now we can't even help our wife. I feel like we do feel as a character, as a person, overwhelmed and maybe a bit, you know, helpless. We can't do anything for our loved ones. And now our vassals, uh, well, our vassals' vassals, I guess, are attacking one another. That is nothing that I should be concerned with, quite frankly. At least I don't think I should be. Where's your capital? Oh, it's up there, right. Hmm. Yeah, no, it's been, it's been truly awful for us. We haven't really been in a position of uh, ruling the realm as the rightful and just ruler that we think we should be. But... At the very least, I mean, we have been pretty good for our family, and I've been thinking, maybe I should change the law. You're against it, Provence, huh? Oh, you do dislike me because you're not on the council. Hmm. How do I feel about Auvergne? I do like Auvergne. He's a great fella, so I'm not going to kick him out. I'm not going to kick my brother out. Prince Asna II, my son. I mean, he is a good person, but does he really deserve to be on the council? You know, he is a family member. I expect that he treats me well, that he gives me good service, so... I think I'm going to put Dukas Ermengarda onto the council. Basically, you can see we still have a very positive relationship. He still is my advisor. No way, no, you know, different way how you look at this, I think. And mm, you have the great pox. Don't come too close to me, okay? Uh, either way, what I'm more interested in, and I know she has no talent in stewardship whatsoever, but what I'm very interested in here is uh, I might actually change my succession law towards equality. We have so many children, so many girls. Hmm. You know what? I'm not sure. I, I don't think we could change this law to high partition even, but would it really make a lot of sense? I talked about this before, and it's not really a risk here. Yes, they get titles, but the kingdom remains together. No chance for a civil war similar to, you know, how I and my brother experienced it. I think I'm just going to... Uh, no, you know what? I'm not changing the law. 
I, I was really thinking about it there, but ultimately, our realm is stable. Our realm will remain together whenever we perish. May that be as soon in the future as it can be. I, I think we're just going to leave it the way it is. The quarrel. My sister, Azibella, has been quarreling with her brother, Lope, for days. Just now I can overhear them arguing in the next room. Unbelievable, Azibella shouts. How can a churl like you believe you are the ideal manifestation of the Vasconia family virtues? I'm clearly far more deserving of that distinction than you are. Hmm. I don't think so. I think you're a bit of a son of a gun. No fighting in the family. You enter the room to break up the fight or let them sort their quarrels in peace. No, no, no. No fighting in the family. Absolutely not. As I walk into the room, Azibella turns to face me. I'm glad you're here, Asna. Won't you please talk some sense into your brother and friend, Lope? He is being completely unreasonable. Hmm. You're in the wrong, Azibella. I am clearly the best that Devasconia has to offer, or you are both acting like petulant children. Uh, petulant children. I think that is exactly it, yeah. Stop behaving like children. We have to stick together. It's the only thing we actually have going for us here. Hmm, you know what? Let's take a quick look around. Um, faction created against me. These are just some peasants. Don't worry about it. Ermengarda has died. Now a kid is in her position. Well, um, I guess we can just put Armagnac onto the council. He's not too bad. He would be better as a diplomat though. You know what? Yeah, we're just gonna switch it around here. There you go. Boom. That is pretty good. You know what? Let me just take a look at this. You had 53% acceptance. We would need significantly more. Let's just uh, phrase it like that. Significantly more prestige. I don't see hybridization in our future. I do see getting out of debt in our future. Now this campaign um, is going very, very poorly. Maybe they will get a white piece, but I do think that we basically feel as though we have guilt towards Alfonso IV. We couldn't get our campaign going in his name, and now he may fall. And with this, I will leave you today. I will think long and hard what Erega Asna Catalinas might want to do to sort of come back from all of this. There has been, you know, there have been people that basically have been saying the world is ending. Our treasury is completely in the gutter. Our warfare affairs are terrible. Our diplomatic network that we established in such a tedious, you know, mini a minute work has completely fallen apart, potentially with not, not just France, but also Asturias leaving our side. And on top of all of that, our friend here has perished and... We even lost a vassal in the war towards the south. We lost the Count of Bordeaux. <sighs> we need to come back from this. Or maybe we can't come back from this. Our wife has cancer. Honestly, I'm very eager to see where this goes. But right now, I think that his life will be yet another tragedy. For the moment, I will leave you with this. And I will see you later. Alligator.